गुड आफ्टरनून स्टूडेंट सो टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी अबाउट पार्थेनोकार्पी एपोमिक्स एंड पॉली एम्प्रियोनिक सो लेट्स हैव अ टॉक अबाउट पार्थेनोकार्पी पार्थेनोकार्पी पार्थेनोस इज विदाउट एंड कार्पी इज फ्रूट राइट सो इट इज अ टाइप ऑफ अ प्रोसेस वेर देर इज अ फॉर्मेशन ऑफ फ्रूट विदाउट द प्रोसेस ऑफ द पॉलिनेशन एंड फर्टिलाइजेशन राइट सो वी हैव जनरली स्टडीड दैट जनरली द फॉर्मेशन ऑफ द फ्रूट टेक्स प्लेस विद द हेल्प ऑफ द फर्टिलाइजेशन बट येस बिसाइड्स दैट देर इज अ प्रोसेस वेर देर इज नो फर्टिलाइजेशन देर इज नो पॉलिनेशन येट देर इज अ फॉर्मेशन ऑफ अ फ्रूट दैट प्रोसेस इज जनरली कॉल्ड एज पार्थेनो कार्पी राइट सो वेन यू टॉक अबाउट पार्थेनोकार्पी द पार्थेनोकार्पी इज जनरली ऑफ टू डिफरेंट टाइप वन इज कॉल्ड एज नेचुरल पार्थेनोकार्पी एंड सेकेंड इज जनरली कॉल्ड इंड्यूस्ड पार्थेनोकार्पी और आर्टिफिशियल पार्थेनोकार्पी वट इज नेचुरल पार्थेनोकार्पी इट इज अ टाइप ऑफ अ प्रोसेस वेर देर इज फॉर्मेशन ऑफ अ फ्रूट विदाउट द प्रोसेस ऑफ द पॉलिनेशन एंड फर्टिलाइजेशन दैट मीन्स दैट देर इज नो पॉलिनेशन इफ देर इज नो पॉलिनेशन द पोलन ग्रेन विल नॉट गेट डिपोजिट ऑन द स्टिकमा देर इज नो फॉर्मेशन ऑफ पोलन ट्यू carrying male gamete hence no fertilization with the female gamete so there is a formation of a fruit such kind of a parthenocarpy is generally called as natural parthenocarpy in absence of pollination and fertilization example banana right second one is generally called as induced parthenocarpy induced parthenocarpy is also called as artificial parthenocarpy where there is a formation of a fruit but the flowers here are generally sprayed by some of the growth promoting hormone such as indole acetic acid naphthalene acetic acid and uh, gibberellin etc these are all the growth promoting hormones which are generally spread on the flowers due to which your induced parthenocarpy or artificial parthenocarpy can be gained right okay now here this induced parthenocarpy is nothing but artificial parthenocarpy by generally giving the doses of your hormones right it might be your auxins or gibberellin the best example is there are certain tomatoes i mean to say seedless tomato are generally produced if they are generally treated with the high dose of auxin and also there are certain grape wine if they are generally treated with gibberellin they generally produces the seedless fruit so here as we spray growth promoting hormone it is generally called induced parthenocarpy or it is called artificial parthenocarpy so that's what all about your natural parthenocarpy and induced parthenocarpy okay so the basic significance of the parthenocarpy is that whatever the fruits which are generally produce seedless fruit they are generally having a higher commercial value okay let's talk about the next topic which is called apomixis apo is without mixes is mixing so without the mixing of the gamete is apo mixes so we all know that apo mixes is a mode of a asexual reproduction where there is a formation of a new individual without the process of the fertilization and there is no involvement of the sex gamete no involvement of the sex gamete no fertilization that mode of asexual reproduction is generally called as apo mixes right okay now when you talk about this apo mixes there are two stages one is generally called as apogamy and second is generally called apospory apo is without right and gamete is gamete so what happens in apogamy that is a single gametophytic cell or a organ will generally produce a embryo like structure without the process of the fertilization that is generally called as apogamy that is without the gamete there is a formation of a embryo like structure that is called apogamy second condition is apospory apo is without and spore is without the spore right so here what happens is that a diploid sporophyte cell right a diploid sporophyte cell generally does not undergo meiosis right and it generally produces your gametophyte it generally produces your diploid gametophyte this process is generally called as apospory okay now let's talk about apomixis in detail apomixis is of two different type i have mentioned on the board the first one is generally called recurrent apomixis and the second one is called non recurrent apomixis right very similar words you can see let's talk about recurrent apomixis what happens in recurrent apomixis is that the embryo sac arises from the archosporial cell at or the other part of the nucellus 
right so what happens here the embryo sac formation is going to take place but from what it is either going to take place from a archesporial cell or any other part of the new cellus we all know archesporial cell they are the cells which are generally present at the hypodermal layer of the ovule right now this archesporial cell may lead to the formation of the embryo sac or the cells of the new cellus which are deployed parenchymata cell are responsible for the formation of embryo sac such kind of a apomixis is generally called as recurrent apomixis now here also there are two stages one is called diplospory and second is called apospory now what happens in diplospory the diplospory the formation of the embryo sac will generally takes place from a megaspore mother cell we all know that megaspore mother cell is a diploid cell which is formed in the ovule right so from there if there is a development of the embryo sac we generally call this it as diplospory second is apospory apospory means here the embryo sac development will generally take place from the new cellus such kind of a spore is generally called as apospory so the first one is recurrent apomixis recurrent apomixis says that there is a formation of embryo sac either from the new cellus or from the at archesporial cell right second type is nothing but non recurrent apomixis what happens in the non recurrent apomixis is that megaspore mother cell undergoes meiotic division and haploid embryo sac is generally formed you know very well megaspore mother cell which is diploid in nature it will undergo meiosis cell division and it will lead to the formation of a haploid embryo sac right during the process of megasporogenesis right embryo arises either from the egg by parthenogenesis or from other or from the other haploid cell of gametophyte so either here there is a formation of your embryo from the egg cell by parthenogenesis without fertilization or it can takes place from the gametophytic cell by the process of apogamy right that is through apogamy a embryo sac would be formed now such kind of a plants which are generally formed are generally sterile they cannot undergo sexual reproduction what obviously sterile means they are infertile example is nicotina right so this is all about your apomixis that is without mixing of the gamete there is a formation of a new individual that process is generally called as apomixis right okay now whenever you talk about this apomixis that is without the help of the fertilization i mean to say that is apomixis a part of your asexual reproduction the last topic is polyembryony poly is many and embryony is embryo now what do you mean by polyembryony there is formation of more than one embryo in the seed is generally called as embryo that is polyembryony it was first first time generally studied by the scientist livion hoy he was the first scientist who for the very first time generally studied the polyembryony in the citrus fruit okay now when you talk about this polyembryony i said there is formation of more than one embryo in the seed now why there is formation of more than one embryo because there is more than one egg cell found in the embryo sac or in the ovule right and all the egg cell which have been present that is more than one egg cell all the egg cell are generally fertilized which generally gives rise to the polyembryony polyembryony is majorly seen in the citrus fruit like you can say lamo lemon mango mosambi groundnut onion etc they generally show your polyembryony right now when you talk about this polyembryony polyembryony is also saying the basic funda that is the polyembryony may be true or it may be false depending upon whether the embryo how many embryos are generally formed in the same embryo sac or the different embryo sac of a ovule now there are two types of polyembryony one is called as adventive polyembryony and second is called as cleavage polyembryony what happens in the adventive polyembryony in adventive polyembryony right there is a formation right there is a formation of a embryo sac there is a formation of a embryo sac and that embryo sac is generally formed by a single unit and when you talk about the next one that is generally called as uh second one which is generally called cleavage polyembryony cleavage 
is nothing but separation. So a zygote pro embryo, whatever the zygote pro embryo which is generally formed, that zygote pro embryo will generally divide into parts or into unit and that entire unit is generally going to lead to the formation of a embryo sac. That kind of a condition is generally called as cleavage embryony. Correct? Okay. So now what is the significance of polyembryony? First, it increases the survival chances for the new plant, right? And also, adventu polyembryony plays a very, very important role in horticultural science for the development of the flowering plant. So, there are two types of polyembryony, adventu polyembryony and cleavage polyembryony.